Hello everyone. In this video lecture, we're going to take a look at some of the theory related to the identification of subjects and themes, and some terminology that will be useful for us in understanding our approach to the English exit exam. In our interactive class uh, in the future, we'll start talking about the objectives of the English exit exam in more detail, and we'll look at some examples. However, in essence, the English exit exam, should you take it, and the mock English exit exam that you'll be taking in this course asks you to examine a short story that you've never read before and identify a main idea therein. You would then develop a five paragraph essay between 600 and 750 words around that main idea. The English exit exam and the mock English exit exam are designed to assess your understanding of stories and literary devices. Do you have the ability to determine what a text is trying to say or what it's trying to argue, what position it's adopting, what its values are, and can you develop a properly structured uh, analytical and argumentative essay on that story based on the uh, interrogation and interpretation of literary devices? This essay that you produce will be no different than any of the essays that you've written up until this point. You're following the exact same structures, the exact same procedures. Um, you're integrating quotations, you're developing a thesis, supporting it using your topic sentences, and so on. In this video lecture, we're going to take a look at some of the key terminology that we'll be using to discuss how we go about developing an essay, and also the techniques that you can apply to a short story that you have never read before, and that you've had no background information regarding, in order to identify what that text is saying, or a legitimate argument for an essay on that uh, paper, or a legitimate thesis for an essay on that short story. Some background terminology before we start looking at those approaches and techniques. First of all, every single short story is ultimately about something. Every short story is an articulation of an author's perspective on the world. Let's take, for example, Star Wars. Star Wars as a film is about something. It's about the subjects of, let's say, fatherhood, family with Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker. It's about war. It's about good and evil, the force, the light and dark sides of the force. These are all subjects of the work, things that it's about. So if I was to ask you, what is Avengers Infinity War about? Maybe it would be about the subject of sacrifice. Captain America and the rest of the Avengers determined not to sacrifice the Vision's life in order to prevent Thanos from gaining the Infinity Gauntlet. Uh, Thanos himself has to sacrifice the life of his daughter, Gamora, the one person for whom he has tender, positive feelings in order to obtain the Soul Stone. So that sacrifice is a major subject that the film is engaged with. Many characters engage in sacrifice or have to sacrifice for their, uh, their goals. And the film seems to interweave that subject of sacrifice throughout the entire work. Good and evil are other uh, major subjects. They usually are. It's rare to have conflict without good and evil. But it's just an example of a si kind of single word subject. Other things could be like the relationship between a father and a son, uh, family, duty, honor, glory. All these would be either simple themes or subjects. In other words, it's what the story is about in just a few words, war, love, hatred, revenge, justice, or like. A complex theme or just a theme is the argument that the story is making about that subject. For instance, in Star Wars, as Luke Skywalker redeems Darth Vader from the dark side, the bond between father and son is powerful to, enough to overcome anything. That would be an argument. It doesn't have to be an argument that you agree with, but it seems to be what the film is implying or arguing about that subject. In this case, the simple theme father-son relationship becomes that complex argument about the father-son uh, relationship being powerful enough to overcome anything. Notice that I haven't said that it's just about the uh, father-son relationship or that the father-son relationship is powerful. Instead, I've actually developed a concrete full argument. That complex full argument is the complex theme. It's what the text is saying about that subject or about that simple theme. Another subject theme or simple theme complex theme com uh, combination could be something like love in Romeo and Juliet. The complex theme, uh, the argument the play Romeo and Juliet makes about love would be that love is an inherently irrational emotion that has to be carefully controlled 
or it will lead to destruction. That complex theme is one of the many arguments inside a text. And every single text has dozens of different subjects and dozens of different complex themes. The way these arguments are conveyed, the way we move from a subject to a theme is by way of literary devices and techniques. The authors use parts of the story, pieces of the story, like symbolism, characterization, setting, dialogue, uh, the development of characters and plot in order to convey the argument that they want to make. These literary devices are the ones that you've been studying up until this point in the course. For instance, the way that a character grows or the lesson that he learns, characterization. Oftentimes, that very lesson is the moral of the story, the complex theme of the story, the argument of the story what the author is trying to say, or symbolism, a key object in its meaning. What that object represents could be a simple subject. Maybe the object represents time or love. And what happens to that object then symbolically conveys the message, meaning, or argument of the story. Our objective in this lesson is to look at how we examine stories to identify their subjects and their themes. I'm going to present to you a sample process by which we can help to interpret stories and analyze them, breaking them down through what is known as close reading, looking at key details critically to help us find first the subject, what is the story about, and the argument the text is making its theme that we can use basically as a thesis. This sheet that will be available in the distributed documents tab for this week on Beowulf includes several different techniques and steps that you can use to help to identify subjects and themes. Ultimately, what I'm talking about here, or what I'm going to discuss with you, is the process of close reading, of looking at the text, or any text that you're given, going through it slowly, step by step, and breaking it down. Once you have practiced these kinds of techniques, they become almost instinctual. You don't really have to think about applying them in a step-by-step -step fashion. They've become so natural that they are integrated into the reading process. But if you go step-by-step -step through each one of these points, you'll be able to work your way towards an understanding of what a text is trying to say and how it's trying to say that. Instinctively, we all recognize what a text is actually about. We can list off those series of subjects. I know that, well, Peter Parker's story in Spider-Man is always going to be about responsibility. That's going to be the heart of his character. Uh, because the responsibility that comes with his powers is referred to, it's mentioned several times in the films or in the comic books. Even the theme of that work, that with great power there must also come great responsibility, is likewise stated directly. All of us are comfortable, we're familiar instinctively with identifying those subjects and themes. But when we're put on the spot and have to develop a full essay or analyze how we know those things, that can be difficult. So these steps are going to help you to actually peel back the curtain and understand and apply what you do instinctively whenever you watch a movie or read a story and refine that process a little bit. So. Ultimately, when you're trying to find a theme, you're trying to answer the question, what is the author trying to say? What argument is he making? What is he trying to teach me about the world? What is the moral of the story? What argument is this text conveying? This process of close reading, paying very fine, close attention to the text and its techniques is one of the, the ways that we can help to answer that question and find themes. The five steps to finding the theme of work, the argument of work, involve the identification of subjects, an examination of the characters in the story, an interrogation of the conflicts, who or what is fighting and why, a reflection on techniques and devices, and lastly, the aggregation of all these things. It's not a separate step, but it is the final point. Once you have answers to all these sort of points within the larger scheme, once you've thought about them, then you can start making connections between them. First of all, before you can know what a story is arguing, you need to know what the story is about. Is this story talking about, is it discussing love, hatred, honor, glory, death? In order to determine that, well, you're asking the question, what are the subject of the story? What issues are, are, is it dealing with? First, 
Describe the plot of the text in a few sentences. Include the conflict, action, climax, and resolution to the plot. So as an example, the play Romeo and Juliet is about two feuding families, the Capulets and the Montagues, and two children or two teens from those two families, Romeo and Juliet, fall in love with each other. However, their love leads them to commit suicide by the end of the play because they believe that through a series of misunderstandings, the other one is dead. And uh, the conflict between their family drives them to destroy themselves in this fraught relationship. Okay, so that's a, a basic summary, just a, a few lines of the, the overview of the play. Looking at that, I already have a series of different subjects that I could identify. Love seems to be a major issue from that theme. Youth, perhaps, the, the naivety of youth. These are teens after all, maybe that's a subject. Death, certainly, as the characters do die in the play. Misunderstandings, after all, Romeo and Juliet killed themselves because there's this miscommunication between them or a misunderstanding of who is actually dead in the play at what time. So. That's just a brief sort of introduction to the uh, determination of what subjects define this work. Look at the plot. What are the major issues that you see in that plot once you've described it? Identify the major subjects of the work based on that summary. Another way to help you to identify subjects is in examining the title. If you examine the title, you may find that it either lays out a subject or in the images that it highlights, or the language that it offers, or perhaps the symbol that it presents, you may find some critical key to understanding what this work is about or what it's saying. For instance, in the short story, The Spider's Thread, I can tell from that title that the object, the spider's thread inside that story is going to be important. So as I'm reading the rest of the work, I start thinking to myself, what is the importance of the spider's thread? Is it a symbol, perhaps? What does it represent if it is a symbol? So I've already primed my mind to start looking for clues inside the text as to what this object that's clearly important because it's signaled to us in the title might represent or why it might be important. Likewise, if the title has certain connotations or allusions or references, then perhaps those can help guide my understanding of what this text is all about. For instance, Raymond Carver's The Cathedral. Well, a cathedral is a massive edifice devoted to the worship of God. So there's a religious connotation to the story. Maybe the story is talking about some kind of religious experience. That might not be true, but looking at the title and thinking about it critically, what is the title literally? What kind of ideas or images are associated with that title or the object therein? And how do those ideas play out in the story or how do those images or where do those images appear inside the story are questions that help me to identify what this story is about. Next, examine the characters. Are characters in this story driven by some dominant emotion? Is that the subject? Is the story arguing something about their emotions? For instance, in the play Oedipus Tyrannus, the main character Oedipus is arguably driven by his hubris or his pride. He believes that he is, in a sense, equal to the gods. He's wise enough to learn the truth, and he doesn't need the gods. That is his failing. That pride or that hubris leads him to destruction. Arguably, that's an oversimplification of the play. But as I look at him, I see that he's driven by that feeling of pride or hubris. Thus, I can examine the play, identify that as a subject, and start thinking about what happens to him because of his hubris. Well, he's destroyed. It leads him to his death. So clearly the play is saying something about hubris. It's arguing that it's destructive. Already, just by thinking about that character and the emotion that drives him, I found not only a subject, but a theme. Once you know what subject the author is writing about, you can then try to answer the question, what is he trying to say about that subject? If Romeo and Juliet is about love, if Oedipus Tyrannus is about pride, what then are these plays saying about love or pride? One of the central things to look at in order to help answer that question are the work's characters. The main character is often used to convey a work's themes. Try to understand this character, what she learns or how she grows to identify a theme. If you're looking at the theme of a story, the argument of a story, oftentimes that theme is the very lesson that the character learns, needs to learn or fails to learn. Take an incredibly simple story about the three little pigs. 
right? The three little pigs, one of them uh, builds his house out of straw, one of them builds his house out of sticks, and one of them builds his house out of bricks. Now, the brick house takes a great deal of time and money to build, a great deal of effort and exertion, and he can't play all day like his, uh, his younger brothers. But in the end, the big bad wolf comes along, gobbles up the two who chose not to devote themselves to industry and build flimsy houses, kills them, eats them, but he can't do the same with the third little pig. And instead, when he tries to enter into the uh, third little pig's home, he drops down into the chimney and gets boiled alive and eaten by the pig. So there's this inversion of what happens to the other earlier pigs. They get the exact opposite outcome. They're eaten or they actually eat the predator in the case of the third little pig. That story is about planning ahead or preparedness, being willing to sacrifice fun in order to do the hard work that's necessary to succeed. Already looking at that character, those first two little pigs who died, the lesson they didn't learn, and then the one little pig who survived and in fact thrived, I've found my theme. And that is that people should sacrifice temporary pleasure in the immediate in order to secure long-term success. That would be the moral or the complex theme of the Three Little Pigs fairy tale. Looking at the characters, I've already been able to figure that out because of the lesson that they learn. Now, in a more extensive story, that lesson can be more complex and the events that go into identifying that uh, lesson can be more complex. But in order to understand what that is, we have to look at the characters in detail. So some of the things that we want to look at in these characters in order to help us identify what this story is trying to say. Who is this character? By understanding who this character is, we can then start to build an understanding of what he wants, why he does the things that he does, what happens to him as a result of those motivations, and then maybe what the story is trying to say about all those other things, um, what he has learned, what he's failed to learn through what he's done and why. Building up that picture of the character, who he is, why he does what he does, and what happens to him as a result can help us to find the moral message or the theme of the story. So who is this character? What, are his, uh, what is his personality? How old is he? What's his physical description? What's his occupation? If this character is young, maybe the story is about growing up. If he's old, maybe it's about facing death. We don't know, we have to look at the specifics of it, but I start to get a picture of what the themes and subjects of this work might be by thinking about who this person is, where he is in his life and the like. What attributes does the character possess? What motivates the character? What relationships does the character have? Are these relationships important to the major subjects of the work? For instance, if she deals with her father, the theme about which the text is arguing might relate to the father-daughter relationship, femininity, or the electric complex. So if I know that a major part of the story is about a young girl or a middle-aged woman or even an old woman dealing with her father, I'm probably looking at a relationship between well, father and daughter. There's something about that that the story is arguing. What happens to the character and why? How are we, meant, are we meant to empathize with this character, to understand, like, and support them? If so, then what happens to that character is probably going to be a positive moral lesson. Oh, this character that we like has succeeded, and therefore, what caused them to succeed might be the message of this story, like the third little pig. Or... If the character is unlikable, what happens to them could be a kind of cautionary tale or an injustice. If an unlikable character succeeds, then we feel like something's wrong here. It's, it's not right. That might be the point of the story. An unlikable character has succeeded. Therefore, something's wrong in the world. And here's what it is. The character has succeeded because of X, Y, or Z. Thus, that's a problem in the real world. Or this unlikable character has been destroyed. And we think that's just, obviously, because a bad person, an evil person, has been successfully defeated and overcome. Why? What made that person bad? Maybe it was his hubris. Maybe it was his pride. Maybe it was his lust for power. Well, the lust for power, in the end, maybe destroyed him. If so, I've learned something about what the story is saying by way of my analysis of the character. In the end, those two questions about how has the character changed or grown? Is it a positive growth or a negative growth? Either way, that might be a lesson to us. And what has the character learned? What the character learns or fails to learn might be the very thing that we are meant to learn. It might be the argument or theme of the story. 
Thus, in the end, by looking at all these different attributes or these questions in order to understand the characters, we can answer the more complex one. Can you find a moral argument to the story or this character's growth? Can you extract a general principle from what he's learned? That might be a theme. The next thing to look at would be conflicts. Stories are almost always about conflicts. In fact, it's almost impossible to conceive of a story without some underlying conflict. The person in this story must be fighting against something. Either he or she is fighting against his own desires, fighting against something in the world that they want to overcome, fighting against nature to survive or struggle, or fighting against another person. If that conflict is at the heart of the work, then the story is probably saying something about that kind of conflict. If you can determine the story's conflicts, you may be able to say what the author is trying to say about that conflict and determine one of the story's themes. So some sample questions to look at. What is the main character struggling to overcome? Is it a person, a thing, himself, God, fate, or society? What causes this conflict? How is the conflict resolved? Is it a good or bad resolution? Who or what wins the conflict? If a person that seems good in the story wins, then the author might be saying that he supports that person, his perspectives, or his values. Again, looking at the three little pigs. The little pig who was devoted to um, mastering his own desires for fun. He's the one who's successful. He masters himself. He controls his base animalistic desires for pleasure in the moment and emerges successful and alive, unlike his brothers. Can you extract a general principle from the conflict? What is the text saying about this specific conflict? What is it saying about this kind of conflict? And lastly, techniques and devices. These techniques and devices are such things as setting, imagery, and symbolism. In the story, as you're reading, try to highlight or underline every single example of a device. If you see that the author is describing an object in great detail, it's probably a symbol. You might not know what that is, but note it. Make a note of it in the margins of your paper or highlight it. If you see that he's describing the setting, he must be doing that for a reason. He's not just filling space. There's a purpose to everything that an author adds into a story. If he's describing the setting, then the setting must be conveying something to us. So things to look at as you're making notes on the margins and trying to work towards the interpretation of these devices. And we'll talk more about how we interpret devices as we go on in the course. Imagery, figurative or visually descriptive language that presents a striking and image, vivid image. For instance, if the text describes the natural world extensively, you might say that it's using nature imagery. Symbolism is usually an object that represents a concept, quality, or idea. For instance, a watch could represent time. A heart, we don't even need to think about it when we see it in the real world. We don't think about the organ inside of our chests. We think of the heart as a representation of love. We give Valentine's Day cards that are shaped like hearts because it represents love. So these are symbols. Common symbols are also something to keep in mind. If you know that, for instance, there's a lamb in a story, it probably has a Christian resonance, given that Jesus is known as a lamb of God. So think back to what you know of culture and myth to see if you can help interpret what those symbols might mean. Also, of course, look at them in context in the story. Diction is a text choice in words, generally used to create emotional effect or contextualize a situation. So if you notice that some strange language is being used, or if the language has certain connotations, that is, it provokes certain connections or feelings in your own mind, that can help you to interpret what is going on in the text, what the text is saying, or, or how it's presenting certain emotions. And lastly, the setting descriptions of the physical and temporal environment. You may not know how to interpret these, but looking at all of these elements, such as characterization, conflict, and all those devices put together can help you to start building an understanding of this work, its subjects, and its arguments. I'm gonna present in the next series of videos, a breakdown of the first 85 lines of Beowulf using this approach going through it line by line, breaking it down using these strategies, talking about my process of reading, how I interpret the characters, how I identify things with the characters or about them, and I begin to interpret the devices and techniques that the author is using.